nurses make up the largest percentage of our health system, but with about half of them expected to retire in the next 10 to 15 years, half of them, there's some big pressure to recruit more young nurses before it's too late. So it's a big task to discuss this. Recruitment manager Prudence Thompson and nurse Judith Couch are with us on the couch this morning. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let's start with you, Prudence. Half? I mean, that's massive. Yeah, yeah. Well, traditionally, there's a quarter of the nurses uh, internationally qualified that come to New Zealand. We go to the UK and US twice a year to meet with nurses, experienced nurses only, who are looking to come to New Zealand. And it's a great success. I've been recruiting nurses for 20 years, and um, they all settle very, very well. Um, English and American nurses and nurses from Singapore as well. But do we also lose Kiwi nurses from here that go in search of bigger pay packets elsewhere? Well, I think traditionally they usually do eventually come home. They do go overseas, do their own and get experience, which is great for New Zealand, but they do like to come back home and go into their roots. If we're talking about 50% of nurses retiring, is that a global problem as well? Are we then going to struggle to get those wonderful um, nurses from the UK and wherever else we recruit them from? Yeah, I, th I think it will be seen as a global problem. So training nurses and encouraging young ones to get into the nurse force will be really, really important. Judith, you are a nurse. Um, what is the attraction of a career in nursing? Um, for me, it started when my grandfather was sick and I wanted to make him feel better. So it, it's about improving the quality of people's lives when they're unwell and helping keep them as well as they possibly can. And do you derive a lot of job satisfaction from being able to do that for people? I definitely do. You know, I work as a midwife as well, which is really awesome part of you. You get to do a lot of education and promoting health things and keeping them well and providing a good outcome for them at the end of it. We're so grateful we have people in the world like you. <laughs> I am wondering though, I guess health budgets are always under pressure. Mm. Does that impact on the work you're able to do and how people feel about their jobs? Yes, it does. Um, I think that the inaccurate funding of housing has an impact not just on me and my workplace in the hospitals, but also on the community as a whole. It means that people don't access health care as quickly as they probably could or should. So they're more sick when they come to us. It means a longer stay in hospital and a bigger expense to the health budget, of course. Does it make for some stressed out nurses too? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, so it does. It does increase our workload. Yeah. Prudence, what can we do to recruit more nurses to ensure that if we see this 50% in 10 to 15 years retire or move on, that we still have enough nurses? Yeah. Well, we actively go overseas and promote New Zealand as a destination. For example, nurses wanting to come to work in either New Zealand or Australia, they can't come to work in Australia if they've got a diploma. They have to have a degree. So that cuts out some of the, the numbers. And also, to get residency in New Zealand, to come permanently to New Zealand, the cut-off age is 45 for a nurse, but it's 56 for New Zealand. So in New Zealand, New Zealand immigration are amazing when it comes to assisting people. They, if there's a skill shortage, they'll bring them across. And the Nurses' Council are fantastic at bringing people into New Zealand as well. Yeah. But do we need to be training more or encouraging more uh, school leavers to, to go into nursing? Yeah, well, you know, the majority of nurses are women and they often have their babies. So that makes it really tough. So do we get, get some guys into the workforce? Mm. What's the proportion like at the moment? Will there be many male nurses? Um, well, where I work in the predominantly women's health field, there's not many. No. <laughs> no. But in other areas in the hospital, there are. But I think um, we need to do some grow your own things. So um, getting a and working nursing and midwifery workforce that is culturally diverse, like the community you're know, providing health care for, is really important. So getting out into the schools, promoting the nursing and midwifery profession, encouraging those students to take science as another core subject that will lead them into a health career is really important. Getting them to come into the hospital and see what nurses and midwives do, or the community settings, and all the other exciting things that nursing does, as well as the stuff that's not so exciting. <laughs> Well, a big, important task to have ahead of you. Thank you both for your time this morning, Prudence Thompson and Judith Couch. Thank you.